This is the Speakers Club Awards 2018. There's a giant among us, and it's someone many of us know and we love. His inside of noise is so profound. Now we don't have time to go to man's personal CV because we'll be here for another half an hour and only scratching the surface. Open mind, open heart, please work at it and sit to the front. Come on, give my clap. Yes, my brother. so that I can be at the same level as everyone else because what we're talking about is really about yourself okay my name is Edison Ekbanji um, I teach a course down in Hackney called Know Thyself a guide to African spirituality what we basically deal with or what we're trying to do is reintroduce the old concepts of African spirituality into our everyday lives it never left it's always been here the problem is we've sort of turned our back on it and, in, and, in, and in, inadvertently turned ourselves on, a, turned against ourselves. Okay, on the question and the subject of today, the regeneration of the black family. We have a situation, I come from a Nigerian background and in our language which we spoke, there's automatically built in the way we greet each other, a sign of respect. You always gave your elders, you would ask who is the oldest in the family or in a situation, and everyone greeted everyone accordingly. So it was known straight away that you respect your elders, how you speak to them and how you treat them. As we've been here for many, many years, we've literally lost most of us, even from Niger different countries, we no longer speak our native tongues or not amongst each other. So in those different languages, that respect was there. In English, unfortunately, hello is hello. And no one is defined by age or anything like that. You're just defined by essentially people respect, I suppose, those with more money than not, like elders. If an elder is wise and knowing, he's really regarded on how well he's done to determine how he's listened to by the people around him. So as far as the family is concerned, We've lost it in our language, we've lost it in our culture, we've lost it in our respect for each other. As regards to the subject of the genius of the black child, geniuses are born, they're not created. Your intelligence is based on the knowledge that you've carried from the previous lives you've lived. And the, you know you can look at a child and see this child has been here before, they understand what is going on because they've carried that energy from their previous lives. You can't take your money with you, but you can take your mind with you. Because your mind is essentially that thing which you bring from lifetime to lifetime and take into all your situations and all your scenarios. When it comes to what we regard as spirituality, because that's the aspect of which I'm speaking about today, I'm not talking about how you pray or what you pray to. I'm essentially talking about how your spirit interacts in this reality. All of us have been so way we start and understand this thing is in the simple things that we do. Now, we are not told that we think in pictures. If I ask you to listen, what you essentially do, it's not necessarily listen to me. What you're trying to do is build an image in my, your mind as to what I'm saying. Have you heard it before? Is it familiar? You're trying to get a picture. Once you have a picture with the knowledge and information you have, then you go into a discussion. You have a little word within yourself to try and define if what I'm saying is making sense or relevant to you. When we speak of spirituality, we're trying to define who you have in that discussion with. You have it all the time, you're having it now, trying to work out Where's this going? What am I talking? What is he talking about? But essentially, that voice inside you is having that inner debate. So when we speak of ancestors, because everyone says ancestors, everyone's thinking of some pie in the sky. 
We're really talking about the people that are having the conversation with you now. I run a class, as I've said, and in that class, we show you how to speak to your ancestors. Or we just show you how to have a proper conversation with that inner voice that you're using, to have that discussion with. Within that inner voice, you can't survive. If I ask you to remember or ask you to think back into your past, the first thing you're going to do is ask a question within yourself and wait for a voice to give you an answer. The fact that you hear that voice means that voice isn't you. Because you can't be two things at the same time. So ultimately, you've had a relationship and been working with your ancestors all along. Now, as to, as po um, in talking about the genius, per se, of who we are and what we are, we have children that now, back in the day when I was young, I would never conceive of speaking anything angrily against my parents. I would never think of it. It'd be sacrilege. You'd be waiting for a slap to come with you. And 30 years on, your boys don't even listen to you. You speak to them and they look blank. They look like they can't even hear what you're saying. The problem that we have, if you understand that you think in pictures, all of us are working from an image that we have of who we are. That's the most important thing. If someone says, who are you? The first thing you're gonna do is try and look at the image of your life and decide if it's good or bad and decide whether you're doing well or not well based on that image that you have inside your mind. Now, if you try and imagine the image that these young children have based on the education that they've gone through, which basically was there to put them in fear of authority, inferiority, inferiority. So these kids are basically trying to get over the color that they are because they've been taught all their life that there's something wrong with who they are or something less than who they are. And the way we work, we all try to create images. If I say I want you to think about something, first of all, you've never thought in your life. Let's not get carried away. The reason why I say that is whenever someone gives you a question, you pose a question within your mind and you pray that you hear a voice that comes back and gives you an answer. If you don't hear an answer, you turn around and say, I've got nothing. I'm not hearing anything. So that voice has always been your ancestors or other people giving you advice, working with you all along. It's just that it happens so quick, we just think it's something else. So when you're dealing with these young kids nowadays and they have these images uploaded of who they are from their school, from their inferiority complex process to them, if someone's trying to tell you something, you're in a scenario where you have an image in your mind and that person's trying to change that image. If you're fixed or you have a strong belief about that image, you're unable to take on another image in your mind. Therefore, you can't actually listen to what that person's saying. So we have a situation where we've allowed our children to be uploaded with images that we now cannot break. We can't find a formula. We can't give them an image that would let them put aside their fear of the future. Because the problem that they have is they can't see a future because one hasn't been designed for them. So we're trying to sell them, be good, act great, do all these different things. But it's hollow because we can't shift the image of how they see their future inside their minds. So we're stuck in a place where we no longer retain the knowledge of how to change these things. Thing is, it is there and there's people that know, and we are trying to bring this back. Because we know that all of us are having scenarios where sometimes voices in our mind, we would prefer not there. And when we're trying to do something, these voices are putting us down from within ourselves. And we're struggling to get over them. We're trying to look for an image which will give us the instructions, because before you act, you have to first design the image in your mind of what you're gonna do. We say in your imagination, you do all your visual calculations. You decide how and what you're gonna do. And if you haven't got a clear picture of what you're gonna do, you haven't got instructions of how to get out of this thing. That's why people are stuck in depression, because they're unable to create an image inside their mind to, get, to help them think of a way to get out of the situation that they're in. 
So try and imagine where our children are based on what they've gone through and what they've had to experience. What is the image that they're working from? How do we change that? If we could go back to our old ways, that would be fine. If we could go back to teaching them our old ancient languages, that would be fine. Obviously, the language that they speak has limited their perception of who they are because it has no favorable words for them. The fact is, if someone has labeled who you are, they can destroy the label that you're fighting to uphold. You're battling against the label, not who you are. So you're always in a position of weakness just by someone using that label that you've decided to adopt or they've given you and you've accepted as yourself against you. So we have to come out. We run classes, we do, okay. We run classes, uh, we got one running in Hackney right now in Back to Eden where we're basically going through all the different stages of how you interact with you. We're not trying to give you some hocus pocus, we're not trying to give you no spells, we're just trying to remind you that you've forgotten yourself along the way and you're following someone who's designed a world which you don't fit in. The reason why we keep seeking, looking for alternatives is because we know we don't fit into the norm that we're perceived that we're supposed to be in. Okay, thank you very much, okay? That's our brother Edison, man. Brothers, Edison, make some more proper noise. Because that's our whole goal here, man, our whole goal. Absolutely fantastic, absolutely fantastic.